नमस्कार हेलो एंड वेलकम टू सनसेट टीवी आई एम टीना झा यू आर वाचिंग पर्सपेक्टिव द शो वेयर वी ट्राई एंड ब्रिंग बिफोर यू डिफरेंट एस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ अ सब्जेक्ट व्हिच इज ऑफ करंट सिग्निफिकेंस टू इंडिया एंड द वर्ल्ड इन फोकस टुडे इज रोड सेफ्टी समथिंग दैट कंसर्न्स ईच वन ऑफ अस बिकॉज़ वी आर ऑल रोड यूजर्स इन वन वे और द अदर इन केस यू आर वंडरिंग व्हाई आर वी टॉकिंग अबाउट दिस नाउ लेट मी पुट इट इन कॉन्टेक्स्ट The third Sunday of November every year is observed as the World Day of Remembrance for road traffic victims. To remember the millions of people who have been killed and seriously injured on the world's roads and also to acknowledge the suffering of all affected victims, families and communities worldwide. Globally, over 3500 people die every day on the roads, which amounts to nearly 1.3 million preventable deaths and an estimated 50 million injuries every year. making it the leading killer of children and young people worldwide an estimate suggests road accidents could cause around 13 million deaths and 500 million injuries during the next decade particularly in the low and middle income countries recognizing the enormity of the problem and the need to act the united nations general assembly adopted a resolution in september 2020 proclaiming the decade of action for road safety 2021 2030 with the ambitious target of preventing at least 50% of road traffic deaths and injuries by 2030 so this year marks the beginning of the second decade for action for road safety the global plan on improving road safety was launched by the united nations last month calling on countries to deliver on the resolution's target by making roads safer in the coming years saving lives and preventing serious injuries but the question is how much attention will the global plan be able to attract to road safety worldwide what kind of action is required to not just reduce road fatalities and accidents but also increase awareness and sensitivity about road safety so that is what we are going to analyze on the show today with an eminent panel of experts who are joining me on the program so let me first introduce them to you i have with me on the panel mr indresh kumar pande he is dg road development and special secretary ministry of road transport and highways dr k ravinder senior principal scientist in hod tpe division central road research institute and ms karuna raina she is director public policy and research save life foundation thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program today mr pande let me begin the program with you so the global action plan for the second decade of action for road safety aims to reduce road accidents by 50% in another 9 years now considering our road traffic deaths numbers are quite high more than 1 and 1/2 lakh people succumb to road accidents in our country every year which accounts for 11% of the global deaths every year what are we doing to bring down this number right to set the context right i would like to just mention certain statistics road accident data we have as per the 2018 accident data dates around 4 lakh 67 thousand accidents out of which 1 lakh 51 thousand has caused death and 4 lakh 60 thousand 9000 injuries given this figure the india ranks the dubious distinction of first time in the accidents yes occurring on the roads and if we talk about how these accidents are causing our economic loss as well as suffering to the peoples it is uh if we talk about the age wise from 18 to 45 years age the expenses are around 69% and if we consider the total 18 to 60 years of age which is the really working age then the total accidents is around 85% of the total So this 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 works out to be a great uh, I mean loss to the economy uh, 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 our country. Absolutely. Which uh, affects up uh, uh, about three percent of the GDP. So given this I mean the situation under this scenario, accident road accidents are really a great concern, and our ministry has also made a target to reduce these fatalities by fifty percent by two thousand thirty. and to address these issues a protocol for identifying black spots has been uh, issued mm-hmm. under which a stretch of 500 meter is to be identified where in the last 3 years either five accidents has occurred or 10 deaths have been occurred taken together in the last 5 years 
And till now, on national highways, we have identified around 1,250 accident life spots. And for their rectification, delegation of powers has been given to the concerned regional offices to sanction estimates up to 50 crores of uh, work and rectify all these uh, bad spots. Okay. But obviously, to expedite the procedure and because we have quite less time to achieve the target, reduction by 50% in just, uh, just, just, just about nine years, the global plan also talks about a safe system approach of which the most important one is having a safe road infrastructure. Now, looking at the poor track record of the Indian roads, they're often termed as killer roads. What are we doing to improve our road infrastructure? Yeah, decade of, uh, as you rightly uh, said, uh, decade of action plan was earlier, uh, it was 2011 to 2020. But uh, after a review in between the, the decade of action plan was uh, extended 2021 to 30. Because uh, uh, some of the countries, uh, including India also, uh, there are some countries uh, who could be able to reduce and some of the countries uh, mainly in the African region and the Mediterranean region, the accidents were increased. So to have a safe road infrastructure, uh, actually on Indian roads, uh, the National Highway and the State Highway together constitute about 6% of the total road net. But which uh, mobility point of view, if we take, uh, which contribute about 65% of the traffic mobility. But uh, while the expanding the, our national highways and the expressways, wherever the crossing facilities were uh, earlier, it was missed. Now it was retrofitting as a safer solutions. In addition to, there are five risk factors were identified over globally. One is the safe speeds and the seat belts and the helmet and the drunken driving and the child restraint. Mm -hmm. So this safe speeds uh, safe speeds is the uh, main uh, risk which uh, target to reduce the number of accidents on the uh, our indian roads so mainly the number of accidents uh, which are uh, uh, created as a black spots mainly at the uh, intersections that also the staggered intersections which constitute about 50% of these accidents. Okay. So if we can improve from the intersection design point of view or from the uh, visibility point of view at the intersections, we can be able to reduce our accidents uh, on Indian roads by 50%, which uh, mm -hmm. uh, even the ministry data also shows uh, uh, the 50% of the accidents are concentrated at the T and the Y intersections. If we can enhance the safety at these intersections and the sharp curves, mm -hmm. we can able to reduce the number of accidents on Indian roads by 50%. Okay, so infrastructure, uh, Karuna Rena, is of course one area which requires attention and th there is progress on that front. The government has undertaken several efforts in recent years. But what are the other areas that require attention as well? For example, post-crash response and the other areas which require attention if we are to bring down the number of deaths due to road crashes. Because if we look at the other countries, in countries like the United States, in Japan, the number of road accidents are much more than in India. But in India, the number of fatalities are much, much higher. Um, so if I take a step back, I think the most important thing uh, is to have a framework uh, where all these different elements, uh, which Mr. Pandey and Dr. Ravinder spoke about, can come together. Uh, and that a framework is something which we have now by way of the Motor Vehicles Amendment Act. The Motor Vehicle Act 1988 was amended in 2019, and it introduces a lot of road safety provisions uh, by way of ensuring accountability for faulty design. So Section 198A talks about accountability for designers, concessionaires, uh, that they need to be accountable. There's also a fine for them. It talks about uh, right to um, uh, 
cashless treatment uh, so that whenever a road crash victim they can receive uh, treatment within a certain amount of time and that the government will provide uh, that particular fund wherein they are getting that kind of attention uh, in the emergency care system there are stricter fines for risk factors which dr ravindra was mentioning for non uh, usage of seat belts non usage of helmet so if all these factors all these ease of road safety like we talk about so engineering enforcement emergency care and awareness mm -hmm. if all these are implemented well i feel we would be able to reduce the number of road crash deaths considerably and one sort of impediment for that so far has been the implementation of the act uh, so morth has come out with all all the major rules which were required under the act however a lot of states have not implemented the act so if you look at the top 10 states uh, where number of road crash fatalities are highest maharashtra west bengal tamil nadu they still haven't implemented the act and implementing this act as well as implementing the various sections under this act will help ensure uh, that the number of road crash deaths are reduced okay Mr Pandey so what are the roadblocks in implementation because clearly there are provisions but the key lies in the implementation right actually the accidents are multi classed you know the road network or road infrastructure is just a part of it that is only 38% of the expense i mean uh, can be ascribed to the road designs or road infrastructure uh, in education other factors are road uh, vehicle engineering enforcement and the education and apart from that uh, if we compare to the uh, developed countries we have a very complex situation of the road traffic here yes. it's a it's a i mean uh, I, I, i mean uh, a lot of i mean the uh, animals are also there the bullocks uh, carts is also there tractors trucks all these kind of i mean mixed traffic is there and these uh, we are not able to make them completely uh, traffic awareness is uh, lacking and they are not following the traffic rules as such also so these are the basic I mean, parameters which has to be taken care of and as of road engineering i was telling you the black spots identification uh, 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 making the junctions as gate separated to um, address the i mean the uh, uh, traffic conflict points making the capacity enhancement of the roads making two lane to four lane and we are single lanes making two lanes these are the basic things which are we are taking up and a massive uh, budget has also been given by the government of india this year we have got the highest budget of 1 lakh 18000 crores just to improve the road network so government is already giving such a large i mean uh, emphasis on the road safety and target has already been fixed for cutting down the 50% accidents by 2030 motor vehicle act has also been amended to put uh, the quality aspects as ms karna has to, uh, uh, told mm -hmm. other the uh, fines for this uh, enforcement has been increased tremendously so this i think will if the things is brought down then uh, things will improve another one program has been taken up that is called the ira that is the integrated road asx data management which is a mobile app based system and this is this has been developed through the iit madras and if that is the data is collected and analyzed for uh, how to address all these things okay uh, dr ravinder clearly challenges are there in implementation and as uh, uh, both mr pandey and karuna rana pointed out some states have not implemented it as well but if we talk about the challenges and the roadblocks in in terms of improving the road design the uh, road engineering that we are talking about how is it different in urban and rural uh, setups and also considering the different terrain in our country yeah as uh, rightly said uh, uh, pande ji actually road system consists of main three components one is the road user the other one is the vehicle which is ply on the road the third one is the uh, road road infrastructure yes so there is a distinct different from the urban roads to the rural roads rural roads in the means uh, it is which are the intercity roads so you have in the urban roads point of view you have every uh, within the 500 meters or within the 1 kilometer distance you will have a one 
cross uh, traffic which play and come on the intersection so these are the major challenges uh, because in the urban roads point of view we could not able to provide accommodate all the infrastructure needs of the all users right from the vehicle users and the pedestrians and so that uh, you have the slow moving traffic as well as you have the uh, high speed uh, moving traffic this and is the urban condition if you see the particularly dr ravinder since you condition. mentioned the urban urban uh, uh, setup and the yes. road design data suggests that you know 50% of the road accidents involves the most vulnerable section which involves the pedestrians the cyclists the motorcyclists so what kind of attention is required to bring down this number as well yeah we have to segregate the traffic and also provide proper facilities whether it's from the pedestrian point of view as well as where the whether from the vehicle users point of view so now what is happening it is a club of pedestrians and as well as the motorcyclists and the high moving vehicles as a result there is a mismatch between the speeds of all the road users so now uh, various state governments have been taking place with a separate uh, pedestrian paths and cycle paths in uh, urban street infrastructure enhancement point of view that you already seen some of the road sections in delhi also you have a uh footpaths along with the cycle tracks at uh, some of the road stretches even in chandni chowk also there is a separate uh, uh lanes for the pedestrians as well as the motorists and the other vehicle users okay. so nowadays if you see in delhi you will be able to find uh, this is a separate uh, uh, pedestrian uh, slow moving vehicles uh, um, in terms of uh, footpath network as well as the Uh, other road vehicle users so that is the uh, safety can be enhanced similarly at the intersections also so this uh, is yet to uh, implement the different uh, um, crossing facilities okay so karuna rana obviously there's no doubt that uh, to ensure that we have a safe road system and wherein we have a safe passage for all, all kinds of people who are using the roads be it pedestrians be it the motor cyclists or the cyclists a multi pronged strategy is required and concerted efforts are required from different stakeholders so what is the kind of uh, effort that is required on part of community members on part of civil society members to make it a public movement because what we have seen in our country is any movement which involves the participation of public ensures high amount of success absolutely i completely agree with you i think even on this occasion of the world day of remembrance uh, the community of road crash victims and survivors is is huge in india and it's important to bring them together every year 150000 people die so every year 150000 families have to go through uh, the trauma of losing a loved one and a lot of these people might be our neighbors our friends our family members so the whole point of world day of remembrance is to provide a platform to elevate road traffic victims and their families and call attention to policies that when properly implemented and enforced can dramatically reduce death and injury and as part of that one of the important things which civil society can do and which we as a non profit working on road safety we are doing is to create models of change or to create models of success which can then be replicated and scaled across the country so for example one of our flagship models which we are working with now also with the ministry is called the zero fatality corridor approach where we are taking up a, uh, a deadly highway and trying to see how we can reduce the number of road crash deaths and injuries there by using scientific approach by using data by um, auditing that road by looking at what were the main key uh, risk factors and then how can that be ameliorated and mitigated and that has led to a lot of success now for us for example on mumbai pune expressway we have now managed to reduce the number of road crash deaths by 50% uh dr ravinder spoke about the need for treatment on intersections we're now using this approach called tactical urbanism which is quick light cheap way of redesigning that intersection mm -hmm. in a uh, simpler way so instead of getting a full redesign done we are using paint cones and barriers to redesign that intersection provide modal equity make sure pedestrians don't have to share a space with high speed moving traffic and we implemented that last year at bhalaswa which is on the outer ring road in delhi 
and the intersection saw 100% dip in fatalities when the uh, trial was ongoing. Similarly, we're trying similar work at black spots, which are intersections in the rest of the, uh, in Delhi. So there are a lot of ways, uh, again, in which civil society can shine a light on this issue, but also work uh, with the government and with all the stakeholders to ensure reduction in road crash deaths. Absolutely. Mr. Pandey, since we're talking about all stakeholders, how big a role can the vehicle manufacturers play? Because what's concerning is very few vehicle manufacturers have a five-star safety rating in our country. Yes, vehicle is one of the most important uh, components for road safety. And that's why the industry has already made it mandatory that all the vehicles has to have the airbags now. And these things are being made mandatory. And the vehicle manufacturer has to come up with such designs which is safe and far giving to the, uh, even uh, in the driver makes some, some error, he has to be alerted before an accident takes place. So those kind of things has to come up. Certainly. Dr. Ravinder, one concluding remark from you, because road safety in our country is not just a health issue and a social issue, but also an economic one. And as Mr. Pandey pointed out, we are losing uh, around 3% uh, to our GDP because of road safety uh, measures, inadequate road safety measures in our country. So what is the way forward so as, uh, which, which enables us to achieve the target? of reducing it by 50% by 2030, and also overall making our roads much more safer, making people aware and sensitizing them as well. Uh, in India, we are manufacturing about seven standard vehicles, seven star vehicles, but uh, most of the vehicles are get exported to the outside countries. Uh, then, uh, there are about uh, two standard vehicles are about 90% uh, in India. But uh, as a road safety issue, uh, even the road user is also very important. So as a road user, if you are over speeding, uh, is responsible for that facility. Suppose if the facility is designed for 100 kmph, is traveling about a 180 kmph, which is happening in the uh, this Agra Expressway. Mm -hmm. So 180 to one, uh, two, uh, 220 kmph during the uh, foggy conditions, who is responsible for that? Even though if you have a good uh, international standard of uh, uh, infrastructure, unless the road user is also feel, yes, I am a part of the road safety. The same road user, if we go to the outside countries, because he will stick to the rules. Why not he stick in India? In Japan, the fifth class onwards, they will be teach how to cross the road and how to obey the signal. So that type of uh, behavior should come inculcate in our Indian uh, users also. Absolutely. Then only we can Very valid point. more than 50%. Very valid point there because education and awareness is key to a, a, any kind of uh, obstacle that, that you know hampers our development. Mr. Pandey, you wanted to add something? Yes, as has already been discussed a lot, there are three basic factors which are causing the accident. That is the one is the engineering, road and vehicle. Another is the enforcement, which is lacking to some extent, and the awareness and education. Yes. These are the three main uh, I mean, uh, key points where government is already giving some uh, this thing, but this has to come as a uh, uh, so absolutely it has as to a be combined effect, uh, combined effort of the society as well. Absolutely. Unless the society comes forward and they follow their traffic rules. This will not happen because the road engineering only accounts and nearly 35% of the total weight. In, in the urban area, the basic thing which is I mean, causing the deaths is the over speed. So that has to be taken care of by putting speed cameras and making enforcement uh, stricter. Absolutely. So, so since all of us are using roads, it's important that all of us make it a participatory movement. And since we have seen in our country, movements like Swachh Bharat have been, where, where there has been participatory approach, they have been quite successful. It's important that to, in order to make our roads safer, concerted efforts are required on part of every stakeholder. So with that, I'll have to call it a wrap on this edition of Perspective. Thank you to all my guests for joining me on the program and sharing your thoughts with us and our viewers. Pleasure having you on the program. So that's it from us on this edition of Perspective today. See you again next time. Thanks very much for your time.